Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about narcissistic families. I get a lot of requests on this about people that come from narcissistic families and the abuse that they've endured. Okay. Here's something that you got to understand. A narcissistic family, the abuse that you get from a narcissistic family is going to be a lot worse than any other kind of abuse that you go through. Because although you can go through abuse with a partner or an ex or something like that, that person you can move on in your life, okay? If you have kids with them, you know, that's another story. You still have to go through that hell of trying to co-parent with them. But when you have a narcissistic family, You are going to feel isolated, you're going to feel alone, and you're going to feel ganged up on. And a lot of people that are in that position are what we call the scapegoat. This is the one that is the target of the narcissist in the family, okay? Now, you can have multiple narcissists in a family. In other words, the main narcissist could be the parent. And then what a narcissistic parent is going to do is they're going to pit sibling against the other sibling. There's always going to be a competition between the siblings, okay? Or a competition between anybody in the family. A narcissistic parent wants to have the control. A narcissistic parent is not going to respect their child's boundaries. A lot of them have this attitude like, it's my way or the highway, okay? And if you are the scapegoat in the family or you're the truth teller in the family, in other words, you're the one who's always speaking the truth. You're the one who's saying things that the narcissist doesn't like, the main narcissist in the family. You are going to be the target. You are going to be the one ganged up against by the narcissist and all their little flying monkey allies, which could be, you know, your siblings or other relatives, um, aunts, uncles, grandparents, or something like that. But generally in a family, there's one main, main narcissist that is pulling the strings, okay? And they're the ones that have it out for you. And what they'll do is they will get everybody against you, especially if you're dealing with covert narcissists. They gang up on you, okay? And how do they do that? They're going to try to discredit you and make you look like you're crazy. This is what a covert narcissist does. Their goal is to make you crazy, and this way it discredits you. So they'll say things like, you're sensitive, or they'll say things like, you know, there's something wrong with you, or, you know, you take things to heart, or something like that. They will completely invalidate your feelings, all right? And why is that? Because they can't deal with the truth. A lot of times you're exposing what they're doing as being wrong. You're exposing their lies and manipulation and they don't like it, okay? So now if you disagree with the main narcissist in the family, they're going to have it out for you, okay? And they're going to use the other people in their family to be against you. They're going to get together and not include you. They're going to isolate you. They're going to pretend that they had empathy when they really didn't. And the way you know that somebody has empathy is really when you're going through something rough in your life, you'll know whether somebody is narcissistic or not is whether they're there for you. If they're not there for you when times are tough, okay, because of their pride or because you said something they don't like or maybe because they don't want to be burdened or they're selfish, you know that you're dealing with a narcissistic person that has no empathy for you. And this is the problem that a lot of people face that are in narcissistic families, okay? The narcissist is not going to want to make is not going to want to, you know, be there for you or validate you. They will these people will not validate you, you guys, okay? And I've had a lot of people on the post say that they've gone years without talking to their families because they had to. Because they never got anywhere. You're going to find that when you try to resolve conflict with uh, a, narciss- a narcissistic family or something like that, you're never going to win, okay? And why is that? Because they gang up and they, they, 
they always have somebody that's the target. You're the target because you give the most resistance. You're not agreeing with them, okay? And this is what they can't stand. You're calling them out for something that they did. You're calling them out for accountability. A lot of times they'll give you the silent treatment. Um, They'll talk behind your back. Narcissistic families love to gossip about you and everything like that. And it gives them a sense of power and control, but they will always align against you, especially if you're the scapegoat, okay? And you will have other members in the narcissistic family that may agree with the narcissist. They're going to agree with whatever benefits them. Who's the one in the family that benefits them the most, okay? Even if you're right, they won't validate you because they're going to agree with who's going to help them out the most, all right? However that could be. That could be financial or other ways or something like that. So the best thing to do is you have to disengage. You have to get away from this because it's going to cause you a lot of stress. It's going to cause you a lot of stress. There's going to be a lot of yelling and screaming and disagreements, and they're going to use triangulation and say, well, you know, Even Aunt Mary says, you know, there's something wrong with you. Or, you know, even, you know, your your brother thinks that, you know, you're sensitive or something like that. This is how they bully you, okay? They all gang up against you. But understand this. If you're speaking the truth and the narcissist doesn't want to acknowledge it, then you have to just disengage. And people say, well, how do you disengage when you have a narcissistic family? Well, sometimes you can't just walk away. There's cases where you can just walk away and there's other cases where you have to gray rock that family. And what does that mean exactly? That means that you deal with them on a minimal level. You don't get into things. You don't sit there and try to defend yourself because they don't care. They don't care. They have no respect for you. Understand this. When you're the scapegoat scapegoat in a narcissistic family, they have no respect for you. Your word means nothing to them. They will not see it from your point of view because if they have to see it from your point of view, it means that they have to take accountability. So they're not going to do it. Instead, it's a lot easier to just flip the blame and say, there's something wrong with you, okay? And what the narcissistic family, when they gang up, they're going to say things like, well, you have mental issues. They love to use the mental issue card, okay? Because this is their way of trying to come off like they're not picking on you. They're just saying you have mental issues and they're also discrediting you. They're discrediting, you know, that you're in the right mental state because you are saying something that they don't want to hear, okay? You are challenging the narcissist and especially the main narcissist who's got the main control in the family. So, you know, when you're dealing with with some uh, with a dynamic like that and you're dealing with a narcissistic family you got the main narcissist who's got the power and the control and then you have you could have like other narcissists in the family that align cuz narcissists will align with other narcissists for whatever reason they will always have somebody that's the target okay and the one that challenges the most or the one that speaks the truth or makes the family not look right or speaks bad about the family, they're not going to like it. Now, here's the irony when you're dealing with a narcissistic family. What they'll do a lot is they'll post on something like Facebook about how they have this perfect family. They're very concerned on image to outsiders, to friends, to neighbors, to maybe distant relatives. They want to look like they have the perfect family. So what they'll do is they'll post pictures and say, you know, oh, this is so-and-so and everything like that. And meanwhile, they, they're they talking bad about that person, okay? They're hypocrites. They're flat-out hypocrites. So they always want to portray that they've got this perfect family and everything like that to, to outsiders. They're very, very insecure and... um. They can't stand the fact that you, you know, you're, you may have self-confidence or you, uh, you know, you challenge them or something like that. They hate that. Like, how dare you challenge them? Okay. 
So if you're a very strong individual and you're not somebody that goes along for the ride or doesn't play the game like the other members in the family, you are the target, okay? And what you have to do, you guys, is you've got to be, you know, mentally strong and understand that you have to accept it for what it is because you're not going to change these people. They are who they are. You're not going to resolve conflict with them because they will never see it from your point of view. And especially if they have other flying monkeys in the family, supporters that back them up, they will never, ever give in to you. The The thing with a narcissistic family is, and especially when you're dealing with that narcissistic parent, is they will... Um, they will divide. They will not unite the family. They don't care. They will divide because of their pride, because they won't give in. So they'll have a broken family or they'll have a family where members are not talking to each other rather than try to mend the fence and be, you know, show some humility to try to give in a little bit to make it work, okay? A lot of times in narcissistic families, they won't sit down at a table and try to work it out. There will be a lot of silent treatment. There will be a lot of no contact. It will be a lot of, well, I'm not dealing with you or stonewalling when you say something or, you know, the silent treatment and they try to break you down to the point where they're not going to give in and you have to beg them in order to be in their life or something like that. You have to succumb to them and try to beg them to be a part of their life in order to have a relationship with them. They won't meet you in the middle. Okay. And why is that? Because they don't need you. All right. Understand this. It's a very sad, it's a very pathetic thing. And there's a lot of people that are living with this. And why don't they need you? Because they have an army of other family members that they are aligned with. So they don't need you. Okay. It's not a family of love. It's a family of pride. They're more interested in their pride, their ego. They are insecure. They will not build you up, okay? They don't want to give you that power. And there will be other members in the family that do manipulation that might have it out for you. There's a lot of jealousy that goes on in a narcissistic family. It could be jealousy among siblings. It could be jealousy among, uh, you know, aunts and uncles and who got more attention or who's doing better in life or, you know, maybe a narcissistic parent is, you know, showing more care to another per to, to one child. One child's the golden child because the golden child tells the narcissistic parent everything they want to hear. So, of course, the narcissist is going to, you know, favor that child. OK, instead of mending fences between their children, they don't care that it's divided because it's whoever, you know, kisses ass the most that's who they're going to, you know, align with. So there's a lot of, a lot of jealousy and you can't, you can't, you know, you can't change that. That's just internal that people have. People could be jealous of your strength. People could be jealous of your self-confidence. People could be jealous because your grandparent gave you more attention than they got. Okay. The people could be jealous because they feel you're better looking than them. People could be jealous in your family because they feel you're doing better in your career. All right. There's a million different things that could happen and you're not going to be able to change that. You're not going to be able. You could try to align with certain people in the family. But if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, you will never, ever be connected. They they don't trust you. They don't trust you, okay? So although they can be nice to you at times, they will never f truly be connected with you because they don't trust you. And they're going to be wherever their bread is buttered, 
Okay, and that's usually where the money is, all right? And this is where you have a lot of shifty families, and especially if there's money involved. Then you're going to see a lot of narcissists going at it, okay? And you see this with people fighting over inheritances. You see covert narcissists manipulating the, the person in the family with money, and they steal inheritances and everything like that, and they manipulate and they try to get you out, okay? They're very shifty. And, you know, they don't care. Blood is not thicker than water in a narcissistic family. Understand that, all right? They're out for themselves. A lot of them are very materialistic. They're worried about, you know, what what somebody could do for them. They're worried about having nice things. They're worried about, you know, what makes them look good. They're worried about their image and everything like that. So they will sell themselves out for some kind of material gain than to try to align with somebody and, and have a loving relationship. They don't care, okay? They don't care. They're out for themselves and they are driven by, you know, material things, all right? They're not about the Holy Spirit. They're not about trying to mend and, and have love and, and try to work things out. They don't work things out. They ignore it. They sweep it under the rug. They don't want to deal with it. And if they don't need you in, your, in their life, then they don't care. They don't care. A covert narcissistic family, if, they, if there's members in that family that feel that they don't need you, you're not doing nothing for them, okay? There is nothing that you are doing for them. Guess what? They could live without you. They don't have a feeling of, you know, you're, you're my family and I need you and I want to be close with you. And later in life, you know, you, you lean on family members. See, that's when you feel it the most is later on in life, you know, people's health goes down and, you know, you lose family members and stuff like that. And the family gets smaller later on in life because people go every which way. Or like I said, sometimes you lose people to sickness or things like that. And that's when family really becomes important. And this is what these people don't realize. This is what the narcissistic family doesn't realize, how family is supposed to support each other. And it's one of the hardest things to ever deal with a narcissistic family because you are going to feel empty inside. You may move to another state. You may move to another country and have new surroundings and it may be a little easier, but you're always going to feel that emptiness, all right? And it's a really hard thing to deal with. And what you have to do is you have to understand that, you know what? You can't control things in life. You can't control, you know, you the family that you 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 know you're born into or something like that. You could only live according to the way you should live, which is do the right thing, all right? And if you're dealing with people that are toxic, that are not validating you, that every time you try to talk to them, they won't hear what you have to say or they start yelling and screaming at you, or they tell you you're crazy and they discredit you or they put you down or something like that, guess what that's going to do? That's going to affect your health, okay? That's going to depress you. That's going to give you anxiety. That's going to give you stress. And that's going to cause other ailments down the road, okay? A lot of people say stress could cause cancer. There's a mi million and one different ways that living with this kind of toxic family could really break down your health. So you've you've got to, you know, think about your mental state and your physical state of what's the best for you. You want peace. When you have a toxic family, you will not have peace because they will pick on everything. They will constantly tell you that you do things the wrong way or that you don't know what you're doing. They will criticize you. They will judge you. They will bring you down. They do not lift you up. They are not in your corner lifting you up. They are there invalidating you, okay? Telling you that you, everything you're doing is wrong and they don't have your back in hard times because they're going to victim shame you and tell you you did it to yourself. This is what they do, okay? And a lot of times they do that because they don't want to be bothered. 
They don't want to be inconvenienced. And the bottom line is, if they could live without you, they don't need you. That's the sad reality when you're dealing with a narcissistic family. They are cold. They are unempathetic. They don't care as long as they have other people that they can align with. All right? So you've got to have your own strength within your own self to live your life, take care of yourself, take care of your own internal family. And if these people cannot, you know, coexist with you and cannot, you know, respect you or respect your opinion, then you have to disengage, family or not. You have got to disengage for your own mental and physical health in order to, you know, sustain yourself and and be okay because these people will will break you down you know a lot of people that end up going to drugs and alcohol and all these other kinds of addictions it's because they're broken people that have been broke down a lot of times by narcissistic families so they try to escape with drugs and alcohol this is why you need to get away from any kind of toxicity even if it's a family member and if you've got to deal with them minimal contact gray rock you know uh you know don't get into big conversations with them if they start putting you down you just walk away if they start criticizing or judging you or or, or insulting you or anything you say you know what unless you're able to you know speak to me in a respectful manner there's nothing to speak there's nothing to talk about here, okay? And you've got to step back from it because if you stay in it, they're going to continue to do it and they're going to keep, you know, beating you down and see how much you could do, okay? Because it makes them feel better to put down the one that is a lot of times the strongest, all right? The strongest in the family, not the one that follows the leader. It's usually the one that's the rebel, that, you know, is the truth teller, that sees that something's not right and says something, and now you're the target because you're making them look bad because you're calling them out for something that they don't want to take accountability and you're not playing the game that they like to play. You're not building up the narcissist. You're calling the narcissist out and now you are a target to that narcissist. And the only way that you will be able to get along with a family like that, okay, and, and, and you know, the head narcissist in the family is if you appease that narcissist, flatter that narcissist, and tell them they're, they're right. And that's a horrible way to live. You've got to change yourself and your own beliefs and what is the truth in order to coexist with that narcissist, okay? So understand this. It's not you. It's that they need somebody that they could target and it makes them feel better to put that person down. It lifts them up, okay? It lifts them up. And when you're out of the picture, if you step back from it and you disengage from this toxic family, guess what? Somebody else is gonna be the new target because they always gotta have somebody that they could talk about. Narcissistic families are the biggest gossipers going, okay? Who's talking about this one? Who's talking about that one? Who's not, you know, who's got the silent treatment? And you see this, you guys, in weddings. When people go to weddings, who doesn't want to sit next to this one? Who said this one? Who didn't say hello when they walked in and stuff like that? Because they're very petty, all right? They're very petty and they don't let things go. So, you know, disengage and anything that, you know, if, if anybody disrespects you, you've got to step back from it and say, you know what, the problem isn't me. The problem is that I'm dealing with a narcissistic family that will not validate me, that will not respect me. And, you know, a, a lot of them are manipulated themselves by other narcissists that have it for me, that are jealous about me. So what's the best way to attack me is to gang up and put me down and discredit my character or my mental health 
or call me negative or say I have mental issues, that makes them feel better. That makes them feel superior, that they are superior. They, they're, you know, above you because, you know, now they're putting down your mental health. Understand if you're speaking the truth and they can't acknowledge it, then you don't need these people in your life and you need to step back from it. You will always feel a little bit of emptiness, but you'll have your peace. Okay. So I hope that helps you guys. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and please share, share, share the podcast. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. I want to tell you about my two books that are on Amazon, okay? You can download them free with the trial membership from Kindle. The first book is Regain Your Power. If you're in a relationship and you feel like your partner has all the control in the relationship, maybe you're walking around on eggshells, you're afraid to approach them, it's going to tell you how to regain your power. And, and be happy in the relationship, okay? And what you may be doing wrong, and that's why your partner has all the control in the relationship. The other book is he's Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time. There's a lot of people that are dating someone or in a relationship with somebody who's not really vested in the relationship. And we, we often are confused as to whether our partner really likes us or is into us or wants a future with us. And this book is going to give you signs and red flags of whether your partner is into you or he's just basically drifting and wasting your time. So go to Amazon and download the Kindle free trial membership. Doesn't cost you anything. And check it out. It may help you. Okay, and have a great day. Are you dealing with a toxic person or a narcissist and you don't know how to handle this person? Well, if you have a question and you want it answered, you can get a personalized video sent to you. The link is in the bio, wizio.com slash the underscore game exposed and ask a question and have a personalized video sent back to you answering your question whether you have a toxic person in your life, a narcissist, you're having a dating or relationship problem, get your question answered. Go to wizio, W-I-S-I-O dot com slash the underscore game exposed to ask a question. Links in the bio. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at The Game EXP123 and also on Instagram. The game EXP123. Okay, and have a great day.